question here is, is this a bad sign for football, Keekly retiring? Uh, it's good and it's bad. Uh, it, it, you're really looking at the, the dichotomy, the dynamic, really, of the job of football versus the business of football. And I think players right now are running a different mathematical equation in terms of their career. And that's great for football, the business, because you guys have now afforded players like myself and others so much in terms of platform riches that guys can leave the game early. But it's also highlighting the underbelly and the ugly part of football, which is it's bad for your health. It's occupational hazard. There's hell to pay as soon as you cross the white lines and different degrees depending on position. What Luke Keekley is saying right now is he's run an equation that maybe before his eight-year career and $63.5 million in earnings that he would have ran through all of those walls. But in the process of running through those walls, having four diagnosed concussions, has now come to a realization that his future and what he already has attained from the game is something that he has to weigh heavy. And that equation changes for every player based on what you have get gotten from the game and what you want from your life after the game. So respect to Luke Keekley and respect to the NFL for giving us this opportunity to have this luxury such a young time in his career because there was a day, maybe Schlereff's day or before, where they didn't have that same luxury and they had to run through that wall just to make sure that they were okay. I think it's great for the NFL. I think there's nothing but benefit here where you can sit there and say, hey, man, I am at the top of my game. I'm one of the greatest players. I mean, you look at Luke Keekley and people say, well, he's one of the smartest football players I've ever been around. Luke Keekley is one of the smartest people I've ever been around. That guy has skill set, and he's got the ability to do whatever he wants. And the NFL has afforded him the opportunity to make that $63.5 million after eight years and say, you know what, what do I want to do? Yeah. We've never been in a place where we've been more empowered from not only a financial standpoint, but an educational standpoint. I know what I've done to my body from the neck up, sp you know, specifically from the neck up, most importantly, but also from the neck down. Yeah. And now I've, I have the opportunity to weigh that out. I, made, I came in and was a starter my rookie year made 45 grand. Hmm. That was in 1989, right? I mean, right. Though, you don't have those opportunities. When, so uh, to me, this is a great thing. You, it should be celebrated. The league should look at something like Luke Keekley or somebody like Luke Keekley and celebrate the fact that, hey, guys, you can, be, you can come into this league and you can play for eight years and you can be set for life and then you can do whatever you want to do. And here's the beauty of Luke Keekley: When you don't get your identity and what you do for a living – when your identity comes outside of what you do for a living, because if your identity is in what you do for a living, when that gets taken away from you, you know what? You're going to struggle. Mm -hmm. It's just fact. Yep. You're going to get pink slipped, outsourced, whatever the case may be. Downsized, cut, you will struggle. But if your identity isn't in, I'm a football player, if that's not how you identify, then you can go on and do whatever you want to do. So good for the league, good for Luke Keekley. This is a great, great, this is a great to me. It's great for the league. Tagging along with what you just said, and I completely agree, I think this is good for the NFL because this isn't a bad sign. It's a sign of the times. Look, we're a woke culture now. Everybody's more aware than they were 20 years ago. I mean, when you were starting out in 89, yeah. everybody had styrofoam cups. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was, we were sipping out of plastic straws. Mm -hmm. I just stayed last night in Beverly Hills. I wouldn't be caught dead with a plastic straw. <laughs> I, I mean, you would be uh, castigated in the streets. It's not the right thing to do anymore. It's because we're all aware of consequences now. And sometimes, even for the greatest gifts, like the NFL and, and the pride that it serves communities with, and some of these players and how they serve their teams and their teammates, we understand there is a consequence attached. So if you're going to play this game at an elite level like Luke Keekley did for so many years, and you're going to benefit so greatly from the sport and the sport benefiting from your hard work as well, walking away at the right time, I think, serves the NFL correctly because we're not going to read about how he went broke. We're not going to read about how he is broke. Mm -hmm. We're going to read about how he improved his life even beyond the game and in turn improved the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got to hop on board with, with all of you and say I think it's great for the NFL. I, I think that it's a teachable moment, I think, for a lot of young players in, in the sense of you should realize, like, make as much money as you can, take care of that money so that you're not beholden to the NFL for longer than your body will allow. Mm -hmm. And 
And so I, I know a little bit about Luke Keekley because he's from Cincinnati, Ohio. My brother, my nephews go to the high school, St. Xavier, that uh, Luke Keekley went to. I know how that school, it's a private Catholic school, I know how they prepare young men, not just as athletes, but for participation in all of society and how they try to build young men. And so I look at football, and, and it's like we love, and a lot of people love to say the NBA is the greatest thing in the world. But I look at football and how it basically requires you to go to college and experience some form of a higher education, or how much you invest in it is up to you. But I look at Luke Keekley from St. Xavier to Boston College to the NFL. This guy is making this decision, not just because he has the wealth to move on, but because he has the intellectual wealth, he's been developed as a full person, and he can think of something else to do beyond football. Sure. This is a great story and should be role modeled for other NFL players. Yeah, um, there are two sides to this coin, and I won't gloss over the other side of the coin, which is basically an example. Uh, your NFL career is like you taking a conscious last hold of breath and going underwater for those treasures. And then you realize Luke Keekley did in eight years and some others in five years, 10 years, it's time to come up for air. Because it's hell under there. It's hard to play football. Basketball is a better job. Basketball is not a better business necessarily in totality, but to the individual, some would say it is. But the game, the job, there are 40 surgeries up here combined minimum, I think. Uh, Mark, you 27 in? 29. 29 in? I'm 10. I've had four, okay. five, five. And all I wanted to let people know is... I had one. You had one? There you go. <laughs> Add it up. But it's all with love. Uh, and I think it's conditional love, and that's okay. I think there's so many times we were told as kids that if you don't love football wholeheartedly, something's wrong with you. You don't have to have unconditional love for the game. There are conditions. One of the conditions for Luke Keekley was, I have had enough of these concussions and whatever it can do to compromise me going forward. And I respect that. I, you know, I, lo I love this conversation because, you know, it's timely. We just saw two videos. One where Keekley sat in front of his camera in his linebacking room and he addressed the fan base and the ownership and his teammates mm -hmm. and really all of the membership of the NFLPA, former players in current, and said, I've done enough. I've done all I could. Mm and tearfully stepping away from his post in the middle of that defense. We've seen another video this week of a talented, Hall of Fame probable wide receiver shouting from his doorstep at the mother of his children fighting to get back into the same league mm. in Antonio Brown. Both of these guys have suffered head trauma. One of these stories feels like it's going to end poorly. One of these stories feels like it's going to end well. I think it is a very difficult it's a very difficult decision to make, but you have to know when it's your time to leave. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Speak For Yourself or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.